and we are back for another art lesson and today we are going to be doing fish tank designs and I have here these are the materials we're going to be using for this particular art lesson uh, I have a big piece of paper this time I'm going to go work a little larger but you can use a regular eight and a half by uh, 11 or nine by 12 construction paper I do recommend using a thicker paper like a construction paper because for this project we are going to be adding water and thinner paper tends to tear real easily so that's just a little tip about that um, I also have some uh, pi pictures of different types of fish tanks um, if you want to take a look at them they're going to be in the details and then I have these uh, idea sheets with different items that you could put in your fish tank to help you draw that you can print out also that link will be located in the details and um, and then what we're gonna be using for drawing we're gonna be working with pencil first and then tracing with Sharpie or permanent marker the reason for this is because for color I'm gonna be using um, water soluble markers or washable markers and like Crayola markers or Mr. Sketch to add some color and then I'm going to add a little water to it and it's going to make it a little bit like a watercolor. So that is the reason why we want a thicker paper and also that's the reason um, why I'm using a Sharpie to outline because it does not smudge when water is added to it. So however, I do want you to know that you do not have to do this particular technique if you just want to color it with um, the markers or color with crayons or colored pencils, that's fine as well. Um, the other option is to trace with crayons and then paint with watercolor um, where the crayons will come through the watercolor. So both techniques are great. Um, you can choose to do whatever you like for this design. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started and we're gonna start talking about designing for our fish tanks. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna make an edge at the top, um, which a lot of tanks tend to have. So I am actually also gonna be using a ruler. I forgot to mention that earlier. And I'm going to start at the bottom and then I'll turn the paper around. I'm going to line up my ruler. This is a thinner ruler. Uh, if you have a thicker ruler, that's fine. It should be fine. Um, or you can just bring down the ruler a little bit so that the edge is a little shorter. Um, you don't want it too thick. But you can kind of play with this a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm going to lightly hold down my ruler and draw a line. I'm gonna shift over my ruler, line it up, hold it down, and continue to finish up the line. And this is gonna be the top, so I'm actually gonna turn this around like that. And I don't need the ruler anymore. I'll be filling that in later. And then the next thing we're going to be doing is we're gonna add a little rocky horizon line where you can see a little bit of the pile of rocks up from the bottom of the tank we usually can see that, and we're gonna make it a little on the bumpy side, like that. And then it, I'm gonna add another horizon line, just to, as a guide. Later on, we might erase parts of it. And actually, I made this a little too rocky, but it's okay. And I'm gonna come up maybe a little lower. We're not gonna give it too much ground. If we go too high, it's all ground. So we just want a little bit of ground to gravel ground. So I'm gonna add another horizon line, making it a little on the bumpy side. And then um, if you'd like, you can, you're gonna start doing, adding some elements to your tank. What would you like your fish tank to have in it? Do you want it? And that's where these guide sheets come in pretty well. Um, <clears throat> cause there's, these are common things you see in a tank, um, especially this page and even the, t the, uh, castle page. So I'm going to be, I'm going to start off with the home, what type of home I'd like in the, uh, in the fish tank. And you can see here too, I'm pulling this picture out. There's a log, see kind of like the design I gave you and different seaweed and pet, big pebbles, little pebbles. You can really have fun with this. Um, we're going to design the background first before we put in the fish. So that's really important. And this is a little rock formation with a little opening that fish can swim in and out of. So it's just a couple ideas. I like that's why I give you um, pictures and idea sheets to kind of spark some ideas in you. And I'm going to do, 
I think I'm gonna do this little rocky cave. Now it can be like a cave or it can be just open. Your choice. And then I'll do some seaweed. All right. So first thing is where I want my cave to be. I can have it center or to the right or to the left. Again, this is your design. You can be creative. I'm gonna put mine to the left and I'm gonna overlap. I'm gonna make it a little larger. You can make it a small uh, rock formation or a big rock formation. Again, this is your design. You can do it the way you want. It does not have to be exactly like my design here or what's on the picture. And I'm gonna make this real rocky and bumpy and large so it really takes up the space um, we want to make sure our space is even one of the things when we're thinking about design is where we're placing things if i put everything on one side of our drawing then it gets very heavy on that one side so when we add something to the left i typically like to add a few things to the right all right so i'm gonna do the opening and I think this one is just going to be opening so fish can swim in through the hole and out of the hole. And I'm gonna do a little bit of erasing because my rock is not see-through, so I'm gonna erase a little bit of that horizon line. We want to try and draw light until we get it right. That way we can easily erase mistakes if we, if we need to. All right, I like that so far. Might add some little like three dimensional edges. That's kind of makes it look a little rounded and cracked and bumped. Kind of like that. All right, like that so far. The next thing I can do, I can add maybe a castle over here or a sunken ship. Maybe I'll do a sunken ship. Let's see, here's my sunken ship. I gave you two basic steps to start with. Um, you can add to this if you want. You don't have to do it exactly like this. It could be similar. So I am going to, I'm going to start with where my ship is going to be. This is going to be a big sunken ship. I'm going to start with the bottom edge of my ship. And then I'm going to do the top, the side. This is going to be the front. It's going to be the tallest part of the ship. And then it's sinking into the ground. So we want it to come down like it's going into the ground. And then I'm going to put it, usually these things are attached to sort of like a rock. So you can just stick it into your uh, fish tank and take it out if you need to real easily. And then I'm going to draw some broken sails. And I could make this a lot more broken and torn if I want to. I don't have to exactly do what the guide shows. I can make it a little more unique, change it up a little bit. I'm going to put an anchor and some portholes. And I'll add a little edge to this because it's... And then I'm going to add some seaweed and thing moss growing off the edge because this is a sunken ship. There we go. Looking pretty good. All right, the next thing I want to do, I need to add some, some, um, some seaweed and plant life, something plant like to give, add in some. And you notice I have put two things on both sides to kind of balance things out, but I can continue to build and add sort of plant life. And I'm gonna do um, probably most of these different seaweed examples, and I'm gonna repeat a couple of them. Some will be up in front. Now, the ones that are in front, I wanna do those first. So like, let's say there's a little seaweed overlapping a rock. So I'm gonna start with the lines. And these are gonna be real tall seaweed. Some seaweed goes all the way up to the top of the tank. And then I'm gonna do the bumps on one side and bumps on the other side. And I'm gonna do this for all three of these lines. Bump, 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 bump. It's looking pretty good. I could even, if I don't like how, 
I could make them even taller if I wanted to. Let's say you're like, oh, it's just not enough. Just, well, you can dress it up and add some more. And then the next thing, let's see, I'm gonna put some going behind a little further back. So if you notice the bottom of this is down a little bit, the ones that are gonna be further back, I'm actually going to move up towards this horizon line. That's how you know it's going back in space when things move up. And I'm gonna do three lines and I'm gonna have it go behind my ship, some overlapping. Again, some more overlapping. And I'm gonna add a line on that side, the left side of the, and the right side, kind of like a grassy looking. And I'm gonna do it for all three. Remember, don't draw through your object if you're doing overlapping, see? So not only does this feel like it's further back, further back, but it also feels like it's behind our ship, showing space and overlapping. All right, uh, let's see. I definitely feel like I need some more. I might put a couple, maybe this other type of seaweed that I've created or given you an example for where it looks like leaves attached to a stem. I'll add one right there. And I might thicken up this stem a little bit just so I can add color. And then I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add another one right next to it, maybe like this one. And it's gonna be behind my rock. And because it's just enough where you could see it through the rock, I'm gonna show it going through the rock. See? So you can see it starts here, goes behind the rock, and comes out. Again, showing overlapping. Overlapping is super important when it comes to art. It really allows us to be able to fit things when it doesn't completely fit. It also shows space, things in front, things in back, which gives it a little more realism that way. There we go. And I think I need something maybe a little lower and in front. So I think I'm gonna do another one of these, a little lower and in front. Now you could add more or less of this, it is completely your choice. This is your design. I'm just sort of giving you some ideas and some inspiration, what to think about when you're placing your items a little bit. And, but you do not have to do exactly what I'm doing. You can do your own thing. Okay, so I'm gonna stop here. I could add more. I could, you know, place it a little differently. I could add some over here, or maybe a li some little stuff here, but I want some room for some other objects. Um, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to maybe add, I could do some coral too. Coral's another option besides seaweed, but I'm gonna leave the coral off. I'm gonna stick with the seaweed, but I really love the little swirly shell. So I'm gonna do that and maybe a starfish. Okay, so my starfish is gonna be laying on the ground. We wanna think of it like a body. So we have one arm is gonna be the head, arms, legs, and then I'm gonna do the rounded starfish. And I'm just sort of almost tracing around the lines to create the shape, just like that. I also wanna put a swirly shell. Maybe I'll put it right here. So I'm gonna start at one point, which is gonna be the center, and I'm gonna move around the center and then stop and close it with a curved line. And I could do a couple of these. I could have one a little further back if I wanted. So we're moving around the center. And I'm doing this one a little smaller because it's further back. These are a little bigger because they're closer up. All right, I think I'm ready for some pebbles. I'm gonna draw maybe some bigger pebbles right here. I could even do some smaller pebbles here. I could add some smaller pebbles if I wanted. All right, looking 
good. And then I'm my last thing I'm missing is my fish. I need some fish. It's not a fish tank without fish. It's just an empty tank full of water. So I have a few examples of fish, but you could look up some others and do some other ideas and different designs. I just put a few simple designs here that you can use. And I'm just gonna, and you can change up the fins too a little bit. I just, you know, wanted to have fun, just give you a few little examples to help you out a little bit. So I'm gonna add some fish. Some fish could be big, some could be small. I'm just gonna put a couple little fish here and there. Maybe I have a little fish like peeking out and I think I'm going to overlap too because I know I have fish pointing in one direction for the examples, but you could just turn it around so it's moving in a different direction. Just follow the steps, just mirror the steps so it goes in a different direction. So this one is facing a different way and it's kind of peeking out and it's in front of my little rock formation. I'm gonna put quite a few fish in here. And I'm gonna have this guy going in a different way as well. I'm gonna do some spiky. Hmm. I think I'm gonna do this one last one. And I could have it a little lower. Mm, I'm gonna think about my space a little bit. Let's see, I've got quite a bit of stuff. I could have it like in the seaweed. Yeah, that'd be good. And I'll do some erasing. That's why we started off with pencil because I wanted to be able to erase a little bit when I needed to. So like this part right here, erase that a little bit. There we go. That's looking pretty good. I can even add a little line to it as well. Like that. Now, I could add more fish in here. I can add other things in here besides what I've got, but I'm going to go ahead and stop for now. Clean up my space a little bit. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is time for some tracing. And I might even use this black to do a little bit of coloring as well. So you can take um, any permanent marker or if you want to just start coloring, that's fine. But I'm going to be showing you another technique with um, water soluble markers and some water. But I want the outline to stand out so I do not want it to smudge when I add water. So I'm going to go ahead and just trace with the permanent marker. And I'm gonna take a moment to do this. And when I'm done, I'll be back and we'll be talking about color. All right, I have finished the um, Sharpie Trace. And if you notice, uh, especially things that are overlapping like this little horizon line, I did not draw through my objects. I went, oh, missed a couple spots. I stopped and skipped so it looks like it's behind, okay? The next thing I need to do is I need to take an eraser, a good eraser, and erase these pencil lines, clean up that drawing. Um, the pencil is just meant to be a guide and it's not meant to be something you see as the finished. So I'm going in and really cleaning up my pencil lines real good. All right, I think that is clean enough. All right, for the next step, you want to pull over some markers and also some water, just plain clean water and a paintbrush, okay? And the first thing we're gonna do, I, whenever I do any kind of color, I like to do background first. So, and then do the smaller details second, all right? So the first thing I'm gonna do, just to show you this technique that I'm taking Crayola marker, and which is water soluble or washable, is another word for that. 
And I am going to be filling this black for the edge of the top edge of the um, tank. So I'm going to leave it for now because I'll get it later with Sharpie. And what I'm going to do with this marker is I am going to just put some blue lines. I'm going to do a little bit and then I'm going to show you. And I don't, I'm just going to put some blue lines, not really filling it too much. But I want a little bit of the texture. So some sort of blue lines it looks a little watery, like water ripples. And maybe a little in here too. I'm trying to not get my seaweed right at the moment. I'm going to pause here for a moment and I'm going to pull the water over, get a little water on my brush and just use that water to spread the ink from the marker. And oh my gosh, that is working so nice. And it's still keeping some of the texture, which I want, um, but it's giving it this nice, light, watery feel to it. And you wanna be careful not to get too much on your fish. Um, which by the way, if you want, you can mainly do this technique for the background because it, if you notice, it spreads real easy. And we're coloring, especially because I'm working on a large you know, picture this time around. If you work on a smaller picture, it doesn't take quite as much time. But because I'm working on a bigger picture, this is filling up the area, the background very quickly. That's again, another reason why I love watercolors because it actually fills and fills in areas real quick where coloring sometimes it can take a while to, you know, color in. Now, if you want, another thing you could do is you can do some of the objects with the watercolor technique, which like for instance, I could, I could even take maybe like a little bit, a stroke of green and even a, you can mix some colors, a little stroke of yellow and for this section of the seaweed, clean your brush because I was just working with blue and I don't want to mix. Wipe a little bit on the edge so it's not too drippy because if it's really drippy, that water is going to spread and you're going to have very little control. And then take that water and I'm actually mixing a little bit and using the two colors to make sort of a limey green. Now, one thing you could do is if you don't want to do the water technique, you could go in and just color it. So you could do the background with the water, sort of like water color marker technique, or, and then just fill in all the small details, just like regular. Totally could do that. That is a great way of creating interesting design for my rock. For some of my pebbles and rocks, I'm actually going to use this water color to add a little at the bottom and a little spots like that. I'm not completely filling in the shape because I'm going to use this watercolor technique to fill it in. And the great thing about this too is when this dries, I could go back with my marker and add a little more to it. So I am just really having fun with this technique, um, seeing what it will do. Clean my brush and keep spreading. Uh, you can do the brown part. You could do some yellow and brown mix and to soften it up and then go over it. Um, so I, what I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna do a combination of the uh, watercolor marker and then just filling with marker. Uh, so I'm gonna work on this for a little while and then I'm gonna come back and show you the final. I wanted to show you a little more of what I'm doing with the ground. I am doing pebbles and I'm putting some brown in the pebbles, these little pebbles right here. And then I'm taking that water, clear water, you know, and I'm using it and what it does, and then I'm just sort of gently pushing around the color into the other parts of the ground. And it makes this really light brown, which is just perfect for this sandy 
with a sandy ground, sandy pebbled ground. And I'm using what was in these little pebbles to help with that. And it's really doing really nice. Love this effect it's creating. Might add just a couple more just to create that watercolor effect that I'm trying to achieve, see? Just give me a little color that I can push around when I add water to it. I add a little bit right here and under. Just like to, so I can, again, take that water and be able to push around the color when it touches a little bit of brown I added. It's working out real nice. Really liking this crayon watercolor technique that I'm using for this. I really think it's doing these really fun effects. And I hope you guys are trying this out as well. Trying something new is always fun to do. It right underneath I'm adding like a shadow under the edge so when I add a little bit of brown just under the bottom edge of my rocks like that and the ship what it does is when I add the water it spreads and creates like a soft cast shadow which is a really nice effect it feels like this object is on the ground and it is weighty and light is affecting our shapes, which makes it more realistic looking. Oh yeah. Now what I'm probably going to do is I'm probably mostly going to, I'm gonna probably paint a little bit of the rock and maybe a little bit of the ship, but most of the rest of this, I think I'm just gonna use just like my, my marker and just fill it with marker. Um, so I'm going to pause and I'll be back again to show you a little more when I get finished. Okay, at the moment, I have done all the painting that I wanted to do with the uh, marker. So the rest of what I'm gonna be doing is just filling in with marker. Um, one suggestion I have, if you are going to paint and then just fill with marker, you want to paint first and let it dry. Because if you go over with your marker, an area that is not dry, it's going to start to spread and it might mix into the colors you don't want. So make sure that your areas are nice and dry before you start coloring. So like right here, it's nice and dry. So I would add a little color to it. I'm just going to use my markers this time around instead of doing the watercolor technique. That's the thing about these tools that are so fun is you can kind of play with color this way. And I'm just going to add a little bit in here like that. And sometimes I don't like to just fill completely. I like to give it a little texture and leave some open space. And I'm gonna add some over here. Oops, got a couple wet spots over here. So I'm trying to, by the way, um, for the texture of the wood on the sunken ship, what I did with the brown marker is I made the wood lines or grains of wood or planks of wood that makes up the ship. And I didn't feel, and then I took the water and I smudged because your lines aren't com completely going to go away. So it still kept the wood texture and filled um, the um, the ship with that brown color. So you can, it's a nice, interesting result. And same thing kind of with the rock. I just put gray in a f some of the edges, gave it some bumpiness, and then added water just to spread the, but I wanted it to be like a light gray rocky texture rather than a darker gray. I mean, I could get darker with that if I wanted to or if I needed to. And because this is a, um, because this is your, your design, you could change up the colors a little bit. Um, a lot of fish tank 
um, plants um, that are made out of plastic are actually other colors besides green. Sometimes they come in bright, fun colors like reds and oranges. So you do not have to make it look high, very realistic. You can have fun with color if you want. Um, also, because this is um, going to be what I would imagine as what's called a salt water tank, there is um, two different types of fish tanks that you can have. One is a freshwater fish tank and the other one is a saltwater fish tank. And the saltwater tanks actually have really bright, colorful fish that you can put into those tanks. Um, where freshwater tanks, the fish tend to be more on the grays and browns and simple color style. So, of course, this is your fish tank design and you don't have to really think about that. You just have fun with it, do it the way you like. But it's just a little quick little facts about fish tanks that I thought I would let you know about. It's always good to learn something new. And I think I'm gonna do something a little different with some of my seaweed. I think I might make this seaweed like a yellow seaweed just to change up the color a little bit. Because if we all only stick to like blues and greens, it kind of starts to look very, you know, simple and a little on the boring side. And I wanna have fun with this. Um, let's see. Also, our shells, you could do sort of gray shells, but I am going to do some bright colors with these as well. I'm going to do a nice bright red starfish. Again, your choice what colors you want to do these. And maybe some orange shells, swirly shells. Forgot to do that rock right there to go back and do that. And also you wanna think about your fish. I think I'm gonna do some orange fish. You could put some patterns on your fish like polka dots or stripes. Um, a common fish style is like uh, these, especially this type of fish right here. Actually, oftentimes they are a bright yellow. So they come that way, a lot of them. But your choice, what color fish you want, I'll let you choose. deciding to do a different using different materials for color um, you could trace all this with crayon and then paint over watercolor and those crayon lines will really stand out especially for bright colors I have actually done this project in that particular way before and it turned out really nice uh, so I do recommend that um, or you can just color it in with whatever materials you've got your choice. Uh, the other suggestion I have for this is instead of doing a rectangular tank, you could cut your paper into a different shape and do a different shaped tank if you wanted to. So if you want to do one of those round um, tanks, you could do that instead and kind of kind of the same steps with the ground and with all the items, um, the only difference is you're working in a different um, shaped uh, area, uh, a different shaped piece of paper. Um, if you cut it first and then start adding all this detail, it still could be really cute and fun and a, just a fun way to uh, create design. And I'll be back in just a moment. I am all done with my fish tank design. I really enjoyed this. This was really fun, especially the, using this new technique with the markers and water to create sort of like a watercolor paint. 
Um, and I hope you really enjoyed it as well. I would love if you could share with me, if you can, um, any pictures that you created. How did you use the guides? What did you put in your fish tank? How many fish did you have? Was there anything else that I didn't do that maybe you wanted to add? This is your design. You could do what you like. I would love to see what you come up with. If you can, you can have your parents paste it, post it on Facebook or you can, for my students, you can email me as well. That's perfectly fine. Um, I hope you enjoyed the lesson and keep creating. I'll see you next time. Bye.